Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar on getting an overview of Final Cut Pro 10. In this session, which is the first of four sessions we're talking about Final Cut 10, I want to talk about getting organized and organizing your media and importing and, and setting keywords, everything up to the point of being ready to edit, because we'll talk about the process of editing in next week's webinar. But for now, let me start by defining the goals for what I want to accomplish today. Our goals for today's session are to define key terms, introduce you to the interface, show you how to organize your system, explain events and how to create them, show you how to import media, explain projects and how to create them, and show you how to set keywords and find stuff. And then we'll wrap up with a question and answer session at the end. An event is a database containing media. An event can be stored on any hard disk as long as it's connected to your computer, and it's available to any open project. This is an important point. In the past, with Final Cut 7, we needed to import all the media that we wanted to have access to. With Final Cut 10, all media is always online all the time, which means that you can pull clips from a variety of different sources and put them into any project. A project is a database containing edit decisions. A project must be connected to one and only one event. However, projects can use media from any event. It's a database. There has to be some sort of a linkage between the media, which is in your event, and the edit decision list, which is in the project. So that connection goes to an event. But then after that, you can pull media in from anywhere. A good way to think of an event is your event is your media, your clips, your audio, your video, your still images, while the project is how they're edited together. Something that we'll talk about but not really use today is the primary storyline. The primary storyline is the main track of your story. All media connects to clips in the primary storyline. Think of it as V1, A1, A2 in Final Cut Pro 7, except in Final Cut 10 there are no tracks. So you start with the primary storyline to which then a variety of different clips connect and we'll be talking about that a lot in detail next week. Keep in mind that the number one interface rule for Final Cut Pro 10 is select something and do something to it. <laughs> now, this isn't as deep as I think, therefore I am, but invariably you're going to raise your hand and ask a question saying, Larry, how do I do X? And the answer is always select something and do something to it. Whether you're working with Final Cut 7 or working with Final Cut 10, you still need to get your system organized and you need at least two hard drives for video editing. Events, remember that's your media, and projects can be stored on any drive, including your boot drive. However, I strongly recommend that you not use the boot drive. Instead, use a second drive. And because of the file types that Final Cut is using, I recommend that that second drive not be connected via USB, nor connected via FireWire 400. It should be connected via FireWire 800 or eSATA, or if you're lucky enough to own a new system, one of the Thunderbolt drives. Another thing that's different from Final Cut 7 to Final Cut 10 is that you must not move or rename files once they've been created by Final Cut 10. And the main reason is the concept of reconnecting media does not exist in Final Cut 10. If you move a file, you can't repoint Final Cut 10 to where that file is. For this reason, do all of your file management inside Final Cut 10. Don't do any file management in the Finder. Except Final Cut 10 was a little skimping when it came to file management. And there's a great utility which I recommend called Event Manager 10. It's published by Intelligent Assistance, intelligentassistance.com, which makes the process of shuffling media files, remember those are events, and project files, remember those are edit lists, into and out of Final Cut Pro. The reason this is important is because all media is online all the time, if you have a client that shouldn't see another client's media, you need to find some way to hide it. Now, it is possible to do a workaround inside the Finder, but it's simpler, easier, and faster to use Event Manager 10. And the cool thing is it costs $4.99 US, which is like dirt free for all of you people in London that are tuning in to watch. Let me show you how this works. This is Event Manager 10. That's the interface. It's really clean. All of the events that you have on your system are listed in the top portion. All of the projects that you have listed on your system are in the bottom portion. 
let's say that I want to not display. I'm not deleting. I'm simply not displaying it. Let's say that I want to not display this media called AVCHD GNOMES. Well, when you say move it, not only does it move the file, it automatically starts Final Cut Pro 10. And when Final Cut Pro 10 opens, notice that the media is stored on the third drive. The media is going to get moved. Final Cut Pro 10 is going to start. And look, on the third drive, the media is not there. If, on the other hand, you say, let's go back to Event Manager, I want to bring that media back in, you could then click it and turn it on and bring the media back in again. This makes the process of swapping projects in and out and swapping media in and out really simple.